Welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and uh, the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is just all the new stuff that I've gotten since my last video. Um, so no particular topic, just going to yeah show you all my new stuff because there's been quite a bit. Um, and it's been over, uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I posted one of these videos, so this is about two weeks worth of stuff that I want to share with you today. Um, before I go into the toys, um, I've done a few of these kind of just catch-all miscellaneous videos. Um, in the past, I've talked about movies, I've talked about comic books, and I've talked about toys. Um, they tend to be my videos that get the least amount of watches as opposed to something where I review a whole line of figures or talk about something specific. Um, so I haven't got a whole lot of feedback on these general catch-all episodes. So uh, I, I've got some comments, but I haven't heard anything back about my, uh, my, my mini movie reviews or any comments about the comic books I'm reading. So I don't know if that's something that interests anybody, if I should keep going that way. I probably will stop talking about the comic books unless somebody requests uh, that I talk about what comic books I've been reading. Um, but the thing is, I read the same comic books every month, so there's only so much you can say about any of them. Um, as far as movies... I never really wanted to be a, a movie review guy on here. There's a ton of people on YouTube doing movie reviews and a lot of people doing a lot better than I, than I would be able to do. But uh, I do usually like to just talk and give my two cents about any of the movies that I've seen. So uh, just in the last couple of weeks, I've seen a few. Um, I saw uh, Godzilla. I can't remember if I talked about, about Godzilla on here. I always intended to do um, a whole video specific to Godzilla. So we talk a little bit about the movie, talk about the old movies, talk about some Godzilla toys. And I just kind of haven't gotten around to that. And the moment has kind of passed. I will probably still do some sort of Godzilla review video eventually uh, on the toys. But anyway, the movie, it's kind of come and gone. I have saw it twice. I loved it. Uh, I really liked it even more the second time. Uh, I'm eager to, to buy the Blu-ray and watch it again and share it with my nephews. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, what else did I see? I saw the new Child's Play movie, which isn't something that I was really dying to see, but my friend Brian wanted to go, and I said, yeah, sure, I'll go check it out. And, uh, you know, they changed some kind of major plot points of, you know, Chucky's origin and all that stuff, which might bother purists, but since I wasn't like a hardcore Child's Play fan to begin with, that stuff didn't really bother me, and I found myself enjoying it, at least as much as I enjoyed any of the previous Child's Play movies. It was just kind of fun. Uh, you know, a little scary, a little, you know, some good laughs, a little bit of gore. Uh, and even though I didn't like the look of this Chucky as much, I actually kind of, I probably liked this Chucky more than I've liked previous Chucky's. Or at least he was more of a sympathetic character than just a straight up murderer in a doll's body. Uh, what else? I saw Toy Story 4, which I thought was great, which I shouldn't have been surprised by because I love all the Toy Story movies. All three of them have been fantastic. Probably the best trilogy ever made as far as just consistency goes. So, you know, I shouldn't have been worried about the fourth one, but myself and I think a lot of other people were were worried just because the trilogy was so good and, like, the story felt like it had been told and is this was, was this going to feel like just a tacked-on story? Anyway, I was super impressed by how much it felt uh, like a, a fourth necessary step in the character arc uh, of Woody and Buzz and stuff. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Uh, the animation was spectacular. So if you haven't seen Toy Story 4 yet, go see that. Uh, I saw Yesterday, which is the movie where everybody in the world forgets about the Beatles except for one guy, which, you know, seemed like a cute idea, but the fact that it was directed by Danny Boyle is really what kind of, you know, made me want to see this movie. And yeah, I liked it a lot. Thought it was cute. You know, they maybe could have done more, taking the concept a little further. Um, I went with uh, Vanessa, my wife, and my parents. I kind of took my dad as kind of a belated Father's Day gift. And I think I'm the one that liked it more than the others. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd recommend it. Go see it. Um, and most recently, I saw Spider-Man Far From Home, which uh, I literally just got off the phone with my brother Brian about it. Usually after any Marvel movie, he gives me a call. He lives down in Chicago. Um, so yeah, we don't get to talk a whole lot, but you know, the Marvel movies or Star Wars movies, it always prompts a phone call and we always want to talk them out. And yeah, I was kind of surprised that he, he didn't love it and he found it maybe a little too corny. Um, it's definitely got some campy humor, but that's kind of consistent with the previous Spider-Man movie and with Spider-Man in general, who is kind of a corny character sometimes. Um, I thought it was fantastic. Uh, Mysterio being the villain, 
I thought Mysterio was handled perfectly. That's exactly how I would want Mysterio to be portrayed on screen. Like I've been reading Mysterio comic books since I was a little kid. I've seen him in the comic in the uh, the cartoons and stuff. And yeah, just his whole illusion shtick, it works perfectly on the big screen in live action. And uh, yeah, couldn't be more pleased with how that all panned out. Um, and yeah, last movie I just want to mention, this isn't a 2019 theatrical release. Um, it actually came out in 2018, but it was a movie that I really wanted to see. Um, but it wasn't released in Canada until, I guess, just the last month or the month before. And I just kind of finally was able to watch it. But uh, totally in different realm than all these other ones that I just told you about, which were all kind of like family-friendly blockbusters or whatever. I watched the movie Climax by uh, the director Gaspar Noe, I think is how you pronounce his name. And he always makes some pretty crazy, controversial films. Um, And so, yeah, I was looking forward to this one. It was pretty weird. Uh, I been waiting for it to come out on Blu-ray or something so I could check it out. I don't even think it's been released on Blu-ray in North America yet. Um, but I was able to watch it through Cineplex's website. So yeah, if, uh, if you like something weird and dark and twisted, maybe don't spoil the movie for you. Maybe don't look it up first, but read up on him. And if it sounds like you might be intrigued by his style of filmmaking, then check out Climax. Cause I thought it was, it was pretty good. It stars, uh, Sophia Butella, who's the chick who was in, uh, she had like the sword legs in the Kingsman movie and, she was the female mummy in the Tom Cruise mummy movie, and she was the, the alien chick in Star Trek Beyond and stuff. I, I, you know, I'm a fan of her. I like pretty much all these things she's done. And, uh, yeah, she was great in this and intense movie. Anyway, so that's movie talk, comic talk. Like I said, there's not much to go on. I'm still reading Spider-Man. Still not super impressed with how the Spider-Man comic books are going these days. Um, so, yeah, otherwise, with that all out of the way, let's just get right into my new toys. So, um, I will jump to that video. I actually filmed these, this, uh, in chunks over the last couple of days. So there might be a little inconsistency in, uh, the speaking points. I might repeat myself a couple of times here or there, um, as it's kind of pieced together, but, uh, yeah, so here we go. Here's my new toys that I've gotten in the past two weeks. So I did get the, uh, new wave of Spider-Man Marvel Legends, and this is from the new movie Far From Home. So this includes, and I've kind of ranked them here in order of importance in my mind. So I've got Stealth Suit Spider-Man, a figure I didn't really need, but uh, a nice figure regardless. Then we've got the Julia Carpenter version of Spider-Woman. Then Hydro-Man, based on his comic book look. Uh, Molten Man, based on his movie look, which is pretty cool. And it's the first figure of Molten Man that I've ever owned. Uh, A new version of Doppelganger, which is Spider-Man's evil clone. Then we've got a nice new version of Scorpion. And then this awesome new uh, movie version of Mysterio, which I think is great. Now, I'm not going to talk about these figures in length because I posted a whole video where I reviewed this whole wave already. So if you want a little bit more detail on any of these guys, just check out that other video. So here is a new version of Starscream from the Transformers Siege line of toys. Some nice artwork on the packaging there. And you can see here that he transforms into his like Cybertronian jet mode, which is kind of just this weird uh, triangle thing rather than his traditional Earth jet. So, uh, yeah, I'll show you the picture there because I have no intention of transforming him into that. Yeah, so there he is. So let's pop him open and take a look at him. So this here is Siege Starscream. Now, I don't have the very first vintage Starscream to show you, but I do have Thrust who was a repaint of the original Starscream because Starscream is the leader of the Decepticon Seekers, which is a team of, uh, of Decepticons that transform into jets. Um, there's like six main ones and they're all just the exact same figure, just in different colors. So yeah, this is what the vintage Starscream looked like, except it was in uh, gray and blue and red. Um, this guy's a little incomplete right now. There were extra hands that slid onto the end of his arms and his wings uh, should attach here on his legs. Anyway, I kept Thrust because he was a character I really liked, but you can see how these vintage toys were maybe a little disappointing to play with. Um, Like the legs didn't move at all. There's no articulation. The arms, there was no bend at the elbow. You can't turn the head. Like 
I didn't really care that they transformed. I just wanted cool robots. And as far as making this robot fight another robot, there just wasn't much you could do with them. They were kind of stiff and boring, which is why I got rid of a lot of my old Transformer toys. So, yeah. Now that I'm collecting modern Transformers, what I'm looking for is something that's posable and that looks like the vintage version. So the Starscream that's been in my collection is my default Starscream for the last number of years. Is this one here. And it's been pretty good. You can see here that he moves at the, uh, or he bends at the elbow. And at the at the leg, he's got some good bends at the knee. You know, he, uh, his head still doesn't turn. But it looks like Starscream. It's about the right size. I like my Transformers to kind of match up with their vintage counterparts. I don't want my, you know, Bumblebee to be, you know, six inches tall or nine inches tall when the original one was only about two and a half. So you can see here, this sizes up pretty perfectly with the vintage Seeker Jets. So yeah, I was pretty happy with this Starscream. But I've had him for a number of years now. This guy came out probably the mid 2000, like maybe 2006, 2007. So yeah, I've had him for a while. And there've been many Starscreams that have come out since. I have bought one or two. Um, but this is still the most iconic looking Starscream I have in my collection. But yeah, I was due for an update and I thought this was finally the one that would replace him. And I think it does the trick. He's a little bigger than I need my Starscream to be, but not a, not a lot. Um, the head sculpt is definitely the best of any Starscream that I've ever owned. And it turns. So yeah, you can finally uh, get some head movement there. He's got some uh, good articulation in the legs there. And yeah, he looks pretty good. I do find he's a little bland looking, like maybe there's a little too much gray. Um, even with this kind of battle damage they've got all over him, which I guess is supposed to make him look a little more interesting. I don't find it helps that much. I would have rather, like you'll see on, on this one here, he's got some yellow on his knees or something. I feel this guy could really use maybe a little splash of color and a couple extra spots to really bring him to life. From the back, he's rather bland as well. But it's pretty cool. My biggest gripe about this figure now that I opened him up is the first thing I wanted to do is bend him at the elbow and he doesn't bend. That's very disappointing because these current Transformers, um, they've been pretty poseable. And uh, yeah, so he's got some movement in the arms. He can still do some stuff. But I just wanted to see him bend at the elbow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think it's a step up from this one for sure. And it's a big step up from the vintage one. This is the kind of toy I wanted when I was a kid. Something that actually looked like the character I was seeing on the, on the TV screen on Saturday mornings. And that was actually fun to play with. So, yeah. Not too bad. Not too bad. Hey, it's been a couple of days actually since I reviewed that Starscream toy. And even though I do like unboxing these toys right for you guys on like live on the video, essentially, uh, sometimes I screw up because I don't have a chance to really, you know, fully take in the toy and appreciate it before I share it with you. So when I reviewed the Starscream, I was complaining about his arms not bending. And uh, yeah, it was just a matter of turning them the right angle. And there is a bend in there. So you can, you know, bend him at the, at the elbows there, which is nice. So that definitely makes me appreciate this toy more than I did because um, that was probably my biggest gripe about this thing when I, when I showed them to you earlier. So yeah, yeah there you go, Starscream, not bad. Now also from the Transformers Siege line, I got the new Soundwave. So this is the Decepticon that turns into a cassette player, or at least he used to. Nowadays he turns into, I guess, some sort of uh, aircraft carrier, spaceship, whatever. Which doesn't really matter to me that much that they changed him because I'll never bother to transform him anyway. I'll just keep him in his robot mode and his robot mode still looks like the classic cassette player. So yeah, let's pop Soundwave out of here and uh, take a look at him. Okay, so here we go. This is uh, the Siege version of Soundwave. And you know, my initial impression is that he looks pretty great. He's got a lot of that kind of battle damage, which uh, the Siege line is kind of uh, known for. I don't necessarily love it, but I don't really mind it either, I guess. It's something different. 
Yeah. He looks good. He seems to have pretty good posability. Bends at the elbows. Bends at the knees. Get some poses out of them there. Head kind of looks up and down a little bit, side to side. Um, tape deck pops open. Yeah, so yeah, he looks pretty good. And size wise, he's pretty much exactly what I would want. Soundwave, even though he turns into a tape deck, is one of those guys that I feel needs to be, you know, a bit bigger than a lot of my other Transformers toys just because the vintage figure was. And I actually have the vintage figure from the 80s to compare to. He's a little, little topsy-turvy. But yeah, you can see there design-wise, you know, there's a lot of similarities. You know, the fact that all the all the buttons and everything are still there, even though he's no longer cassette tape. You know, robot mode, he really looks like he would still transform into a cassette player. And uh, yeah, like, everything looks good. You know, he could maybe use a little bit more color. I had the same issue with Starscream. Maybe if he had some decals or paint job on his shoulders there just to kind of you know more reminiscent of the vintage figure but uh yeah everything looks good and the head sculpt i think is actually an improvement it looks a little bit more like how he was portrayed in say the the cartoons and stuff instead of instead of this head here so, yeah pretty good comparison now when i first started collecting modern era transformers uh the first sound wave i got was this guy and you know i thought okay the head looks right you know the colors are right but he doesn't really look like Soundwave, and of course he doesn't really he doesn't transform into a tape deck and he doesn't really look like he does transform into a tape deck and uh, you know i thought that was okay but i did want something better they basically took that same version of shockwave and blew it up and i got that version too because i thought well this is more appropriate size wise now this color was actually available in blue and black. I made the conscious decision to go with black instead of blue just because I felt, well, if I get the blue, it's pretty much the exact same toy as this, just, you know, a couple inches taller. So I went with the black, which I like that it's different, but at the same time, when this kind of became my default sound wave, I was kind of bummed that he was black instead of blue. Anyway, now I finally got this Siege version, which is pretty good size-wise, design-wise, color-wise. Everything looks good, so I think this is probably definitely going to be my default sound wave from now on. I like it a lot. So just a week after the Spider-Man Far From Home Marvel Legends came out, uh, I got a call that my pre-orders for this latest wave of Avengers-themed Marvel Legends was now available in stores. So I didn't pick up the whole wave. Um, I only grabbed three of them for now. So here you see Rock Python. He's a member of the Serpent Society. Cool packaging on the side there. And so these are all the figures that were available in the wave. Um, I did not get War Machine, even though he looked really cool. I didn't get Rescue or Shuri or Loki. So uh, I might pick those up eventually, but uh, these waves are just coming out uh, too quick. I just got the X-Men wave partially uh, maybe three weeks ago, and then Spider-Man, and now these guys. So yeah. Anyway, let's take a look at Rock Python outside of the packaging. So here is Rock Python member of the Serpent Society, which I really hope that we get more of eventually because there's so many members to the Serpent Society and uh, they've just been trickling out. Like you'll see here, we've got Cottonmouth and Eel is a sometimes member. And then we've got King Cobra as well. So yeah, they're coming along. But I'm really hoping that we get Death Adder and Diamondback, uh, Sidewinder. There's lots of key members left. Um, but yeah, so let's take a look at, at Rock Python here. So he's got kind of a cool, unique look. That kind of weird helmet, which I guess is supposed to uh, emulate the shape of the snake's head. Um, uniform is, again, it's unique, but nothing really special kind of plain um the figure is fine it's uh it's got a good base body it's a good size for this character uh it's got everything you'd expect to see the double jointed uh, elbows double jointed knees there so he's got you know a good range of motion you know do lots of poses uh yeah the sculpt and the paint everything looks nice 
as much as I would say I'm a fan of the Serpent Society, it's kind of, I'm just a fan of, you know, any obscure Marvel character. I just love the Marvel Universe. And when I was a kid and they would put out these official handbooks, which were just guidebooks that walked you through all the different characters, I just loved flicking through those. And the Serpent Society page where it showed all the members, just like, you know, I really fell in love with these guys. Even if I couldn't tell you a whole lot about some of the specific members, like this guy, I had no idea what his his powers were. I had to look him up on Wikipedia before I shot this. And it says he just has rock hard uh, skin and rock hard bones. And he basically throws grenades. So nothing really <laughs> unique or special about him. Tough skin, throws grenades. But he is a cool figure. I'm glad I have him. And he will be made even better as the Serpent Society grows. Because I think they're going to look really great once they're all displayed together. And here is Beta Ray Bill, also from the Avengers Endgame series of Marvel Legends. So artwork on the side, and a little bio on the back. And you can see there that he comes with two alternate heads for the Build-A-Figure Hulk, which I will probably never complete, because even if I buy a couple more figures here, it's unlikely I'll buy the whole wave. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at Beta Ray Bill here outside of the packaging. So here we are, Beta Ray Bill. So he's got a nice sculpt, nice cape, hammer's really cool, so that's uh, you know his famous hammer Stormbreaker, which Thor currently uses in the movies. And yeah, if you don't know Beta Ray Bill, who kind of looks like a, I don't know, a horse skeleton or something, he's just uh, an alien that was introduced during uh, Walt Simonson's famous run on Thor in the 80s. And uh, yeah, he was worthy enough to pick up Thor's hammer and he gained Thor's powers and they, they fought at first, but they quickly became allies. And uh, Beta Ray Bill here even dated Sif, Thor's ex-girlfriend, for a while. Anyway, so here he is next to Thor. I've got all kinds of Thor Marvel Legends, but this is, this is the Marvel Select Thor and it's my favorite Thor figure. So yeah, they look pretty good together. Now... My one gripe about this figure is that uh, I'm not familiar with this costume. Like, it's not too far removed from the costume I'm used to. Like, you still got the cape and the hammer and the helmet and the colors are basically right. I don't know if this is his most recent outfit or just some random outfit he wore at one point or another. But I like his look that he had when he first showed up, which was really just Thor's costume, essentially. And uh, so, like, I've got a version of him in the three and three quarter inch and you can see here it's kind of just a more traditional Thor outfit and I just like this a lot more I think if this figure was wearing this outfit it would be a lot better it's just a lot more interesting to look at like this guy says his chest is so so bare you know from the chest down it's just all solid black whereas you know this figure has those big interesting boots the belt buckles and the shoulder pad it, like just way more interesting. So, it's unfortunate, but I'm not going to complain because I am happy to get this guy in this scale. He's very cool, just like I showed you with Rock Python. He's got all the, the double-jointed uh, joints there, all the limbs are, and the head. It's really cool that he's got an articulated jaw. So, I'm going to open and close that mouth. And yeah, it's a pretty cool figure. Other than the costume choice, I don't really have any complaints. So the last figure I have to show you from the uh, Avengers Endgame wave is Union Jack. So this guy here is a British like spy. I don't know a ton about this character. I do have a few comics with him in it. But uh, he doesn't pop up all that often. But he's got a great look to him. And yeah, I'm happy to get this new version of him. So let's uh, pop them open and take a look. So here is Union Jack. And yeah, I think this guy actually looks awesome. I'm really excited to get a new version of this guy. Like, he's he's pretty simple. Like, uh, you know, I'm sure this body is just completely reused from another character because it's pretty much just a straight up guy in tights. You know, the head, I'm pretty sure it's a brand new piece. But, uh, you know, there's nothing really unique about that either. That could have been 
reused from any number of characters. But uh, I just love these flag costumes. You know, it just uh, it really stands out. And yeah, I always just thought this was a really great looking character. Um, I also have a three and three quarter inch figure of him, which is right here. And I was a big fan of this figure as well. And you see there, he's got his, uh, his knife and his pistol, both of which were removable. They could be, you know, sheathed and holstered in his belt there. And of course the same applies with this one here. He's got his pistol with the holster there and it even looks like it has a little yeah you can fold that flap down over top of the pistol and he's got his removable knife and sheath there and yeah just really cool looking so this guy here no superpowers he's just a, a british guy that likes to dress up and kick some ass and yeah i wish we did see more of him in the comic books um i'm not sure when the last time he showed up was but uh yeah very cool. I like this figure. Looks great. So I also picked up this Dengar, who's one of the bounty hunters from Star Wars. This is the six inch Star Wars Black Series version. It's the first time this character has been made in six inches. So, you know, get some artwork and some bio on the back. Packaging on these Star Wars Black Series is pretty simple, but uh, yeah, so let's pop them open and take a look at them outside of the packaging. So here is Dengar. And this is probably the best Dengar has ever looked in action figure form. Um, he looks pretty cool for Dengar. I'll be honest, I was never really a fan of this character. Um, you know, Empire Strikes, ba Empire Strikes Back came out in 1980 when I was two years old. So, uh, you know, this guy's been around my whole life. I've been a huge Star Wars fan for as long as I can remember. And Empire Strikes Back I've always loved... And that scene where Darth Vader hires the group of bounty hunters to go search for Han Solo. It's an iconic scene, even though most of the characters only get like a minute or so of screen time. But the thing is, each of those characters were so cool looking. You had Boba Fett and Bosk and IG-88. You know, you had a robot and a monster and a bug and a robot bug. And then you got this guy who just... Kind of some frumpy, doofy looking guy with his head all wrapped up in paper towel. It's just hard to get excited about this guy. However, you can't own the other bounty hunters and not have Dengar. Like, even though these guys all work solo, they just kind of seem like a team. You have to have them all. And this is the last one to be made in the Star Wars Black Series 6-inch. So uh, I've been actually anticipating this guy, even though I never liked him. And, and still don't really like him all that much, to be honest. But it does really capture the look of the character from the movie. And yeah, he looks pretty good. I'm having a little trouble getting him to stand up. Uh, you can see here. Like, even, like, what is he wearing on his feet? They look like the kind of slippers my dad has. Again, just not very cool. But maybe that's what makes him badass, is he? He kicks ass in slippers and paper towel. Anyway, I am glad I got him, and he does look great for who this character is. So there's Dengar on display with the rest of the bounty hunters. It's finally complete, and I'm sure there's somebody out there that's going to be mad at me for not having them displayed in the right standing order. Um, for that, I apologize. I just kind of threw them up there. But, uh, yeah, you can see when you look at Bosk and Forlom, Boba Fett, Zuckus and IG-88 like what kid would like this guy the most out of all these characters he just didn't really stand a chance with me because I'm a I love bugs and robots and monsters now this here is a figure I was pretty stoked to receive in the mail uh, this is a mythic legions figure and this here is as you see on the side of the packing there Kauros and uh, you can probably tell right away that this is an homage to Battle Cat, which is the tiger that He-Man rides on. And uh, yeah, if you know your He-Man lore, just like Prince Adam transformed into He-Man, he turned his cowardly cat Cringer into a big mean old Battle Cat. So I think the fact that his name is, uh, is Kauros is uh, kind of a little nod to his cowardly uh, 
background is Cringer. So there you see the uh, couple other figures featured on the back of the packaging. Uh, that's kind of like a, just a general uh, story on the back about the Mythic Legions. And then you've got a character specific uh, bio on the side. So these packaging, this packaging is nice in that it has, um, you can slide the card out there. So that way you can open the figure up. Here, let me just uh, do that right quick. So you can slide this out and open the figure up. And then you can still, you can, and then you can choose to seal them up again. You can just slide this all back together. And yeah, so it's pretty cool. Unfortunately, the cards don't have any like original artwork. Like if this had a picture of Kauros on it, I might be more inclined to hold on to it and maybe pin them up sealed on the wall or something. But uh, since these are kind of generic packaging, I don't really feel the need. But still, it's nice to have that option for people that want to keep them carded. So yeah, let's get them all opened up and take a look at them. All right, so here is Kauros. And now, before I start fiddling around with them, uh, let's just take a quick look at his accessories because he came with quite a few of them. So, got this sword, which you might have seen in the packaging, as that was the only accessory that was prominently on display. Then, not only does he have one pretty cool shield, but he's actually got two. Then he's got some shoulder armor here. So we get one of those for, for each shoulder. Then there is, comes with these attachments here, which can be plugged into his back. And I think these are for um, the optional wing attachments that you can buy for any Mythic Legions figure. So if I, for some reason, wanted to put some uh, some big green wings on this guy, which are for sale separately, I plug this into his back and then give him the wings. That's it. I think that's what those are. Um, then he's got this strap here, which you can put over, uh, sling over his shoulder, and then there's a little spot in there where you can uh, store one of his swords. Then he's got tail. Now this piece here is pretty cool. So this looks to be um, basically just some extra bulk to put on his sh on his neck, which will make him taller and uh, yeah, just appear maybe a little less human. Is right now they've just kind of put this cat head on a standard human torso, so I'm gonna put this on him and that should uh, bulk him up quite a bit, I think. And then he has an alternate head. Which is cool, but at the same time, kind of a bummer. So you'll see here, he's got kind of a, a standard orc head. Um, and then he's got this this red helmet on. So if you wanted this figure just to have an orc with like some orange tattoos on his body, you could plug this head on there. And that's great for you orc fans, but I really could care less about orcs. Um, what I would have liked to have seen is an alternate head with this helmet on the battle cat uh, head because if you're familiar with battle cat from he-man you know he wears a helmet sort of like this and so yeah it really seems a shame that we didn't get an alternate head or just a helmet to put on top of this head but anyway it's, it's better than nothing so there you go you get an alternate head there and the last pieces i have you won't necessarily get these if you go ahead and order cowrows now because from what i understand these pieces were a bonus gift for people that pre-ordered him on the first day maybe even Maybe you had to do it in the first hour or something, but I think I was one of those people that did. So I got this extra shield. So it's not necessarily intended for Kauros, but just for any of your Mythic Legions figures. So you get this gold shield and this kind of crazy mace. So, so let's gear him up a little bit and we'll take, and we'll, uh, take another look. All right, so this is Kauros all geared up. So you can see this uh, this extra neck piece did bulk him up quite a bit. And I actually thought it looked pretty weird on him until I put the shoulder pads. Now, now it looks better. Um, I've also got the, the sword, the two shields, and his, uh, his tail. But yeah, he came out pretty great. Now, if you're not familiar with Mythic Legions, uh, these are produced by the Four Horsemen, which is a, a group of toy sculptors. Uh, they have their own company, uh, Four Horsemen Studios. And they have this original line 
of fantasy figures. So it's full of orcs and skeletons and elves and knights and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, they also are probably most well known for working on the Masters of the Universe line. So it's kind of neat that they've blended their two most famous creations together for this homage figure. Uh, it's not the first time they've done it, though. They did previously do an orc that was dressed as man-at-arms. And there is an evil elf that's painted to look like Evil Lynn. Um, there's a couple that I did actually pick up. So you've got this barbarian here, which is kind of an homage to He-Man. And this skeleton warrior, which is an homage to Skeletor. And it might not look a ton like Skeletor right now, but he did have an alternate head, which was uh, painted in, in Skeletor's uh, better known colors, like a yellow skull with some green highlights and stuff there. Actually, maybe I'll dig that out for you. Okay, I just dug out all my extra Mythic Legion accessories so I could show you uh, how much of an homage this figure is to Skeletor. So you see here there's this alternate head. Much more skeletor -y. There's also like a purple power sword that he came with. This staff. And an alternate head, which is a knighted head with horns. And you can display this head on the end of the staff and kind of gives you that like goat headed staff that Skeletor has. So yeah, a bunch of neat accessories. And besides the one I mentioned, they've also um, got a trap jaw homage figure coming out. And this same figure here coming out in purple, which is gonna be an homage to Panthor. So pretty cool overall. And let me just grab Battle Cat here for comparison purposes. So here is Kauros with the cowardly version of Cringer. And then here is Battle Cats. And with Battle Cat there, you can see the tigery likeness. But what really makes Battle Cat complete is this iconic helmet. So that's the kind of helmet that I wish we had gotten with Kauros. Uh, who knows? Maybe, maybe the Horseman will give that to us as a bonus with uh, another figure maybe somewhere down the line. Uh, I certainly hope so. Not that he really needs it. Like, he looks fantastic just like this. But uh, it really does seem like a missed opportunity not to give him the, uh, the armor. Now that's pretty cool. So a few videos ago, I showed you these three figures that I got. And uh, these figures are my very first figures from Black Major. And if you're not familiar with Black Major, he is a guy that makes these essential G.I. Joe bootlegs. But they're not just uh, like hand-painted uh, bootlegs like you might expect. These are factory-made, so the quality is right up there, just like a vintage G.I. Joe figure. They're made in the vintage uh, G.I. Joe, like 80s style. So these three I got a little while ago. So this is a Cobra Trooper painted in like Tiger Force colors. And then I've got a Star Duster also in Tiger Force colors. And then this here is Cobra Diaco, which is uh, a repaint of a Brazilian figure from the 80s, which was Snake Eyes' head on Flash's body. And this guy here has got his little Canadian flag and stuff on him, which I thought was pretty cool being a Canadian. And I really have not been into buying vintage G.I. Joes for many, many years. Um, but these things, I don't know, they kind of won me over and I thought, well, maybe I'll just get a couple of these, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna be a thing. Anyway, I got a couple of more. So this here is now Tiger Force Snake Eyes, and it's based on the version two, uh, like 1985 Snake Eyes. And he even came with, uh, like if you remember that version of Snake Eyes came with his wolf timber. So he's got a Tiger Force Timber with him, which is pretty great. And then I got another version of the same figure. So another Snake Eyes version 2, except now he's painted in Snow Serpent colors, which is the, the like Cobra Arctic Trooper. And he came with his own timber as well, which is just kind of like a silvery, silvery gray. So 
Black Major, um, when he chooses to make a figure, he kind of focuses on one mold. So Cobra Trooper was, I think, maybe his first one or one of his first ones. And he made this figure in a ton of different colors. Then he tackled, like, Snake Eyes version 1. And right now he's focusing on Snake Eyes version 2. So you can get this figure in purple, green, red, pretty much every color under the sun. Now, I think they all look really neat. But I, I can't let myself go down that uh, rabbit hole that badly. So I'm just kind of going to let myself buy a few here and there. But he's already previewed the next mold that he's going to be doing, which is the, the uh, snake armor. Um, let, me, let me just grab that right quick. So this here is the Cobra snake armor. Um, this is not the original. The original one came in all white, which I still have. Then there's been blue and red versions in the past. And this is the black version that came out. Uh, during the uh, modern figure line uh, along with, it came out as part of the movie releases in 2009 or so Anyway, black major is making a bunch of these in all kinds of various colors So there'll be a tiger force one which I will probably get As well as purple green and all kinds of other stuff. So if you're into this sort of stuff you like the vintage style GI Joe's And you're kind of bummed because there hasn't been any new ones to buy for 20 years Well now there is so you can find black major uh, on Instagram actually that's where he sells a lot of his figures that's where I've been buying all these ones and they came out pretty great now I actually bought a couple others as well so this here is another Cobra Diaco and again another Cobra Diaco now I didn't actually know when I ordered these that they were going to come with this pilot head on them um, so I'm gonna actually have to unscrew them to put them together the way I want them to be displayed because both of them came with little bag of accessories here which includes the the backpack the, uh, the laser rifle and then it's got the the chrome snake eyes version one head which is the same thing that you see over here so that head will be on these bodies and that's how I thought I was going to get them when I ordered them But I guess it's kind of a bonus. I get these extra little heads, but I prefer to display them both with the chrome head So once I get the chrome head on this yellow figure that will be pretty much an exact replica of the original Cobra Diaco that was released in Brazil and It will be a perfect vintage matchup for this modern era modern era version of Diaco that I have here so, uh, yeah, this is one of the, my favorite toys in my modern G.I. Joe collection. I just think it's really cool. And part of the reason I love it so much is I love kind of the, the history of it and how it was based on this old Brazilian repaint. And uh, now to have, like, a reproduction of that original uh, Brazilian figure, it's, it's pretty cool. Now, I don't know what it is about this chrome snake eyes head that just has me uh, enamored with it. But uh, Black Major was selling a couple other figures with that chrome head and I couldn't help myself because uh, as much as I'm you know buying kind of digging these vintage figures right now it's the modern style figure that I'm really into and I kind of wish would see continue to grow so Black Major sold me this figure here which is just a Cobra Trooper body with a chrome snake eyes head and this figure here too which is just a uh, like swamp viper uh, body with uh, again a chrome snake eyes head so I don't know what I'd really call those guys. I guess they're maybe Cobra Diaco in a different outfit or maybe they're Diaco Troopers or I don't know what I'll call them. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but I just think they're kind of neat. And the price is right. These things actually aren't very expensive. So yeah, pretty neat. And the last thing I have to show you on this video here is actually a an old school GoBot from the 80s. And I've actually got him here in his vehicle mode so I can show you vehicle mode for a change. So for those of you not familiar with GoBots, they were uh, basically Transformers. They came, came out right around the same time. I think GoBots actually came out maybe a year earlier. And they were made by a different company. Um, so I believe they were made by Galoob, I think. Anyway, so here's one of my vintage GoBots. I didn't have too many of them when I was a kid. And I have since got rid of most of the ones I had. So that is my favorite one. That is Cop Door. Who transformed into a helicopter you can see here he's struggling to stay to stay standing up uh, i also have my original side kill which is the leader 
of the bad guys. His arm is broken off there, and he turned into a motorcycle. Um, so yeah, I had a bunch of GoBots, and I'm sad that I got rid of them because they are pretty neat. They're a lot simpler than Transformers were. And I did have this one. This guy's name is Destroyer, and he, as you can see, was a little bigger than your average GoBot. So when this guy is in his bike motorcycle mode, that's essentially that's essentially how, how big he was, and that's how big most GoBots were. So yeah, this guy is substantially bigger. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So I was happy to get this guy back. There's a, a local comic book shop here uh, called Giant Robot Comics. And people trade in old stuff to them all the time. And they post them on Facebook. And many times I've messaged them when I see the Facebook post. And I say, oh, can you put that aside for me? And I've always missed them. Somebody else already spoke up for them. So this is one of the rare instances where I saw they posted this. And I was like, oh, can I get that destroyer held for me? And he, he put it aside for me. So uh, yeah, I could probably even transform this guy on... Uh, on screen because he is relatively simple to do. Um, so it's like that. You flip. Uh, I don't have enough fingernails there, but you flip this thing open here. Well, of course, now that I said I would do this on video, now it gets stuck on me. Okay, so you flip that down. The arms flip out. Ah, fuck it. I'll just, I'll come back when he's transformed. All right, so there you go. I don't know if this was ever an official mode of his, but this is how I often displayed him and played with him, with the uh, the tank treads, basically his legs. So you can see the transformation was very simple. I just had to pop his arms out of the back there. But the way he is supposed to be displayed is flip these down, flip these things out as his feet. And then you can see he's a pretty tall... Gobot, you know, when compared to the other Gobots, but uh, as you can see, some of them have some trouble standing up. Like this guy's get he topples right over, and I found his balance was a little wonky like this too. So I usually played with him like this, as I found it just a little more stable and easier to deal with. Anyway, very cool, and I'm glad that this version still has. Uh, looks like most of the stickers. There's a few peeling off here and there, but. Uh, yeah, he's in pretty good condition for such an old toy. And so, yeah, thanks a lot to Giant Robot Comics for helping me reacquire Destroyer. Okay, so those are all my new purchases. Uh, you know, a little bit of everything in there. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please, you know, hit the like button below. Subscribe to my channel. Please leave me comments. I'm always happy to hear from people. And, uh, yeah, spread the word. And uh, thanks for watching. And until next time.